Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, we thank you. We bless you indeed. Your word is coming to us. Come and speak to us. Give to us the life of your word, the wisdom of your word, that we may be able to walk in your will and in your counsel. We bless you through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus this morning? Amen and amen. Look to your neighbor and tell your neighbor you are welcome. Tell your neighbor you are welcome. Welcome your neighbor beside you in the house of God. Amen. This morning, the topic I want to speak with you about, I have titled it, Lord, Use Me Effectively. Lord, use me effectively. Amen. How many of us want to be used by God? Lift up your hands. God bless you. Almost all of us. The word effective means the ability to produce the results that is expected when you are able to achieve the success that is required and that is needed are you with me you can be doing something but you are not achieving the desired results. In that case, whatever thing that you are doing isn't effective. So for something to be effective, or when we say something is effective, we are saying that it is able to produce the results that we are looking for. Are you with me? So the topic as it says, Lord, use me effectively means use me in a way that the results that is expected from me it can be produced many people though are serving God many people though are worshipping God all in the name of God using them but they are not effective they are not producing the results that needs to be produced. That is why there is the need and the call for effective usage of you by God. Amen. So not everyone that is used by God is effective. So you should not only just be concerned about being used by God, but be rather concerned about being used by God effectively. Are you with me? There should be results coming out from how God is using you. How useful you have become in the hand of God. Amen. The kingdom of God that you are in, there are laws and there are principles of the kingdom. If you do not know how the principles and the laws of the kingdom are, you will not be able to function in this kingdom. Jesus told Peter that I will give you the keys of the kingdom. So it is not enough to simply be part of God's family, to simply be part of God's kingdom, to simply be part of the, 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 the domain of God. But rather the question is, how are you deploying the principles and the keys of the kingdom to your advantage are you with me now listen to me god has given everything that is a blessing to you spiritually but i can tell you you can die a miserable christian you will suffer 
we will bury you and you still come to heaven. But you don't always have to wait to suffer here and die miserably before you get to heaven and think of a good life. The good life started the moment you had faith in God through Christ. That moment, the Bible says in Ephesians 1.3, every spiritual blessing was given to you. Not that it will be given. Every spiritual blessing was given. So right now that you are seated here, if your faith is genuinely built on Christ, you have in you every spiritual blessing that you can think of. Are you with me? Now the issue is, how are you going to enjoy these blessings before you leave this world and continue into the next world? That is the issue. Many people are thinking, when I go to heaven, then I will enjoy. Then I'm here also to tell you that then you be ready. You will suffer because there is nothing in this life that is meant to make you happy. Are you with me now? All things that are to make you happy have been deposited in your spirit. But you need to gather the knowledge of God to be able to deploy and utilize the keys and the principles of the kingdom. When you have come to know the knowledge of the kingdom of God, you can benefit from the kingdom. So, unless the keys have been given to you, you are in the kingdom, but the doors in the kingdom are locked to you. And those doors contain blessings. Are you with me now? So, I'm going to give you some few keys. God is looking for you as his child in order to to use you amen God wants to use you amen we have worshippers and we have servants in the kingdom of God we have worshippers and we have servants many of us all when we come to God we come as worshippers but being a worshiper is not the level God wants you to remain. You must rise to become a servant. Unfortunately, many Christians are just worshipers and very few are servants of God. Are you with me now? God does not use worshipers. He uses servants. The reason many people are not saved, the reason many people are perishing, it's not that God doesn't want to help them. It's not that God doesn't want to save them. But the question is, God does not have people that he can use. So we, his children, who are to be the vessels by which he attends to the world, by which he reaches out to people, we have chosen to be useless. God does not see you as useless, but you make yourself useless to him. He has given you everything. Every gift and grace has been given to you. The reason none of us is useless is because the Bible says, in 1 Peter 4 10 that everyone each and everyone as part of the body of Christ has been given a spiritual gift and a measure of grace so as you are in the house of God as you are part of the family of Christ gifts have been deposited into you grace have been given you have grace but you have made yourself useless so God doesn't see you as useless but you make yourself useless to him and what does God do to useless people the Bible says he casts them out from his sight God is a God that is result oriented you being a human you wouldn't tolerate losses in your company you wouldn't tolerate losses in your business you want God to tolerate losses no he's also like you 
when you are not making profits, when you come up with a certain idea and it is not generating money, do you continue to use that idea? You change. You put it away. You try something else. So when people remain useless to God, with time, he casts them out. He removes you and put others there. Are you with me? So even though that he desires for us to be useful, we also have a role to play. Are you here? So you need to rise up a little bit above to be a servant of God. Why do you have to become useful to God? Why do you have to strive to be a servant? Not just a worshiper. Listen to me. There are certain spiritual privileges that as a worshiper of God, you can never receive if you are not a servant. We are all in the family of God, but let me tell you, we are not equal in grace. We are not equal in blessings. There are certain spiritual privileges God will never give to you simply because you are only just a worshiper. You are useless to him. You are not useful. You are not a servant. There was a time, years back, I shared it in some of my old teachings and with others. I took a flight and it was near a crash. As we were in the air, I don't know whatever happened to the plane, but it just stopped and it was a free fall. I felt it was like a movie, Final Destination, the horror movie. Because I, I used to love and watch horror movies. But I couldn't believe this was happening to me. Am I going to die? What is happening here? We, the, the, is the plane crashing or I'm dreaming? But it was real. And come and see the shoutings in the plane. Because we were not informed. All of a sudden, we just realized, ah, we are falling. No more moving or flying, but we are falling. And it was a dangerous fall. People were screaming. You see, and on the, on the tray, I had my Bibles and stuff. And there was this white guy sitting beside me. We were all terrified. Because that particular moment, all I had to do was, what was the last sin I committed before flying this plane? Because that was what I was thinking of. What did I last do? Hey man, I'm like, hey, am I going to heaven or am I going to hell? I, I was, death is not easy. Then, but now I don't fear that it, it can come anytime I don't care. But then I was not ready. I didn't want to die and I don't want to die. I was scared. Screaming. I held to the, the tray and the sea. We were giving instructions, hold whatever thing. See whatever I was. We were, you could see people were terrified. So as the plane was falling, I heard a voice and said to me, clearly, Emmanuel, you will not die here. I have called you to serve me. This is not your final end. Because of you, everyone in this plane will be saved. That was what the voice said to me. Immediately, ah, I let go of the seat I was holding. As people were screaming, I relaxed. So the white guy, the white guy beside me saw that, ah, I'm no more scared. I said, relax, this plane will not do it to, it will come back. We are not going anywhere. Relax. Then he said, you are crazy. I said, no, relax. Relax. I know what I'm saying. Relax. We are, we are all not going to die. Relax. I was like, people were scared. And as we went down, 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 and it went down to the point that as it was, I could see down the ground. Before, for some reason, it regained balance. And it started to build up again. And we were informed that in the course of the journey, the pilot or whoever 
was communicating there was a faulty engine part of the engine was faulty and when I came back that is when I realized that hey, to serve God eh, you should thank God what am I trying to tell you I was saved because I was a servant and even then I was not in the ministry but God knowing my future said I have called you to be my servant to serve me there is more for you to do so this is not where you are dying so the same thing happened to Paul so when you have risen up to allow yourself to be used by God there are certain spiritual privileges you will benefit look I take pride in the fact that I am anointed it is not every death that is that can hit me as anointed as I am you can't touch me easily look if left for me to die I wouldn't have been here I am a man who has been attacked spiritually a lot death traps oh some years ago a prophet said 31st night you were not actually supposed to leave because there was a death trap and you fell into that trap actually they were to kill you and you fell into it but you are here because you have been anointed so God says that fear nothing what the prophet said fear nothing and always give me thanks so if you have reason to be useful to God there are spiritual privileges that you will get don't you think that in that plane were there not people who, who worship God definitely people in that plane some knew God they were worshippers but did God care whether the worshippers would die or not they were all dying it took a servant for him to say because of the servant no one is dying here but if there was no servant then please all of you are coming home are you getting what I'm trying to say so when you have allowed yourself to be used by God you lift up and fall into another dimension of the mercies and the grace of God that is not ordinary to the common worshiper are you with me now when you read John 4 uh, 23 to 24 Jesus said yes God is spirit and he's looking for what worshipers true worshipers who worship their father in spirit and in truth so you have been called by God to worship but then again after a while as you have been worshiping God will be expecting you to become a servant because those that are great in the kingdom of God are servants are you with me now Exodus chapter 8 verse 1 God told Moses to tell Pharaoh that let my people go so that they will worship, they will serve me. God didn't say let them go and worship, but rather let them go and serve me. So we have the worshiping aspect, then we have the serving aspect. You start by worshiping God, then after a while, you start to serve God. The reason God actually isn't moved when you are a worshiper is look, there are thousands and countless of angels that are worshiping him. So even if you, are, if you die, he has not lost anything. Are you with me now? But servants are what he needs. When King Hezekiah was to die, God sent prophet Isaiah, go and tell him that he will die of a sickness. I'm not healing him, I'm not restoring him. Let him die. That is what God said. Then Hezekiah went again before God. Now this time, he, he changed the prayer point. Now he started to tell God, did you not use me to restore your temple? Did you not use me to restore the pastors that had rejected your work and gone out to do other things? I was the one that you used to bring all of the pastors back. Your book and your law was rejected. The nation Israel was worshipping idols. I was the one who destroyed everything. You used me all. So why are you not healing me? Then on the way as prophet Elijah was, uh, uh, Isaiah was going, the prayer of Ezekiel touched God. And God asked one of the angels, bring before me the book of remembrance. And let me check the records of what my servant 
Ezekiel is saying. The Bible said in the realms of the spirit, they brought the book before the Lord. And he looked into the works of what the king was saying. And they were true. And God told prophet Isaiah, go back. I said he would die. But go back and tell him he shall live. And I will add 15 more years to his age. Are you with me now? A worshiper and a servant. A person who allows himself to be used by God. There are spiritual privileges. If I were you, I would desire the essence and the need for God to use me. And tap into certain realms of the spirit. Amen. Are you here? The way you are looking at me is like, what is this man saying? I'm talking to you. Amen. Now for God to actually use us, he prepares us. When you read Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, the Bible says that we are the workmanship of God. Prepared for every good work. God will never use you if he has not prepared you. Any person that God has to use, he prepares the person. God is interested in prepared vessels. Are you with me now? So if you are here and you want God to use you, you will have to go through preparation. So don't just desire to be used by God and skip the process of preparation. Else, you cannot achieve effectiveness in your ministry to God. Are you with me now? I will take you through just some three points and keys that entails to your preparation, how God prepares you so he can use you effectively. Are you with me now? There must be a preparation. Tell yourself there must be a preparation. Tell yourself there must be a preparation. Amen. God is not interested in methods. Look, the reason we are not useful, the reason the church is also not achieving effectiveness, let me tell you, I respect ideas. I respect methods. I respect all forms of systems. But in this ministry, I came to learn something. All the while, I realized that we have been making big mistakes. You see, I'm a person that does not settle for less in the spirit. Because Christianity and our work with God, if you are not careful, you will walk it empty till you die. Meanwhile, there is something there. Until you challenge your spirit, that I want more. This is not it. I want to see God. Not what I grew up to get used to. What people have been telling me. Not what systems I came to meet. And I just blindly follow. And after years, you look back and realize, what? Nothing. And no one is talking. No one is rising up. And we do this and after years we die. And you read parts of scriptures. You read certain stories of certain vessels God used. And you also ask yourself, why am I not being used that way? Why am I not reaching this level? What is wrong? Look, our methods are good. Our formulas, our ideas. But God is not interested in ideas. It is not ideas and methods that builds the church. God is interested in the man. You are his work. Not some external activity. When men fail to realize that they are the work of God, they increase programs. They increase activities. God is not in activities. God is not in programs. Listen to me carefully. I realize that when you a vessel have become very useful to God you become the program of God not some activity that we put up come for all night come for I'm not saying they're not good but I'm telling you the effectiveness of being used by God is not in activities but it is in you the person that is why the Bible said we are the workmanship we are the quality of the work of God. 
if we want to be used by God, if we want to engage in the work of God, do you know what that means? It means God is the one doing the work, not you. Not you. When we say work of men, we mean work that men do. But the work of God, as I came in, all I have been doing was to be working for God. And it makes it to look that like I have to be doing certain things for God. But I realized that all these were empty. I am not to work for God. He is doing his work. And I am his work. Now when I have been worked on by God, I become the means by which he changes the world. By which he changes people. The other time, I was telling the people of Silverton that was it last year or so? Last year or last two years? I had not opened my mouth to preach about Jesus to anybody. But the end of that year, 2022 or 23, almost 15 to 20 people came to God desiring to be children of God. They came to Christ, yet I had not preached Christ to them. What was the change? What was the conviction? When they encountered my life, when they dwelt with me, when they lived with me, all they had to do was, we want to also be like you. When I allowed God to work on me, I became his message. I became his power. I became the means by which he changes people. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you are the one God is to work on. Then from what he has done in you, you also go out to talk about Christ by experience and revelation. When God has not worked much on you, when you go out there to talk, you are only talking things that are head knowledge. They have no power because you don't carry the reality of what you are talking about. That is why today many Christians preach Christ that they don't know. And the Christ you preach that you don't know has no power. Are you with me? The seven sons of Sceva, the high priest, when they met the demonized person, the seven sons said, in the name of the Jesus that Paul cast out demons, we also cast you out. Then the demon paused a bit. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Please, uh, who, who, to, who are you to? Who, who are you? Yet these people were also trying to use the name Jesus. But the demons questioned them. Why? Because they are using a name that they themselves don't even know. They are talking about a person that they themselves, they don't know. But they have heard Paul talk about Jesus. They have seen Paul cast out demons with the name of Jesus. But the secret they don't know is that Paul knew Jesus by revelation and by experience. He was a man that God had worked. And not that he just used the name Jesus and the devils went out. The devils could see that this was the work of God. Paul himself was the message of God. A man of grace. Man that God has worked on. So the name Jesus is was, it's not just a name. But it must live in you. In your talkings. The power is in your speech. It has taken every being of yours. That is the work of God. Are you with me? The Bible says that the power that lives in you and that is working in you. So when you have allowed yourself to go through that process, it's whereby your changed life becomes the ministry. Any pastor that stands to preach or teach and what he teaches is not in his life. Then you are receiving a cold pizza. A frozen pizza. It's what you are eating as a church. Can you enjoy pizza that is frozen? But that is the food you are eating. 
there will be no power and this is what today ministry has become I told God no God anoints men not ideas not the methods the church today is full of activities the church today is full of uh, agendas and programs when God meets men we are presenting activities the activities only tend to feed our flesh the outer man it is why at the end of the day we live and the aura of those activities after three four days they wear out and we return back to the pit there is no lasting transformation but for these activities to carry life they should generate from men and women whom God has worked on and brought about transformation as much as Christ has been developed in you that is when you can be useful to God what is the first process I will just give you three then we are done to be prepared you must first desire if you want to be used by God effectively desire will and be available for God to use you amen desire will it and avail yourself the first one there must be a desire God is not going to use any person who is not desiring to be used by God that is why though you are a child of God but you should be able to present yourself to God to use you are you with me the reason God is not having much people to use people are dying people are going away without God and none, few people care yesterday I was told at my former church that one of the members died and it hit my heart I asked of the cause and they said depression the woman lost the husband and life had been a whole mess for a year so for one year she took herself out from church and only yesterday we heard she passed away depression now we sit down and we ask ourselves couldn't the church couldn't God's people carry grace to have lifted off the power of this depression people are passing away under so much under so much captivity and enslavement doing what are we doing there are people who are crying to God in their quiet places that you have no idea the pain they are going through the hurt they are going through God hears them and God wants to answer but who is the man or woman God has to use you are the answer to someone's prayer someone has been praying for long waiting for God to answer and they think God is not answering not that God is not answering he doesn't have anybody to send the answer through and you are here you don't care one day you will care but it might be late are you with me desire to be used by God That is why when you allow yourself, you present yourself to God that Lord use me. May God open your eyes to the pain of people. Do you know how much the heart of Christ bleeds? If you have shared the pain of Jesus, 
the burden you have no idea when Isaiah had an encounter with God God said we want to send people I want to send someone then Isaiah said please now send me you have neglected being used by God and you want special treatment Jesus said when you go out there and bear fruit come and ask for anything you want and it shall be given to you because of your fruits there are certain prayer answers that will come to you but upon conditions don't sit idle separate yourself and desire certain spiritual treatments and privileges if you can't share the pain God is feeling for people if you want to be all selfish about your own life if you don't want to be part of the business of the kingdom then heaven is only awaiting your death as you come through as a miserable person and you wouldn't be the first and you also wouldn't be the last the choice is there that is why we have to present ourselves Romans 12 1 Paul said I beg you look at the goodness of God and present yourself to him for that is your reasonable service present your bodies to God so he can use you desire Peter said desire to be a servant of God so that you you serve God's church not because of money today people are doing ministry because of money any little thing someone has to do for God they want money hey but that, there are times we also have to give them money but I'm talking about when God entrusts something to you don't do it because of money desire it let it come from a desire because when it's coming from a desire you wouldn't lord it over God's people you will put all your heart into it God wants us to desire tell him Lord I want to be used by you sometimes lock yourself in a room get into prayer with God and this time tell God Lord I am not here to ask you for things I am not here about my own things. I am here for you. I've come to realize you also have things that you want to do. If you're looking for a person, I am here. I am here. I've been asking for my things, my own things for years. I'm still here. I'm still the same here. I'm tired. I want to try yours. Use me for your own things. Use me to help people. Use me to share the burdens of others. Join this campaign of God and see the difference. There are things I don't pray for, but what you are fasting and praying for, I receive them without personally asking God. There are spiritual privileges for the one who allows himself or herself to be used by God. So present yourself. Be available. If you are not available, God can choose you. You are always busy. You are always occupied. You've occupied yourself with a lot of so many things. You don't have time for God. God can choose you. God is looking for people who are available. Avail yourself. Someone complain. Eh, eh, not in this church. But a church I know. Uh, pastor, eh, why is it that you're always using this person for, for, for things in the church? Eh, pastor, every day you are using this one. You are not. It's like you don't see us. How do I see you and how can I see you when you come to church once a month? When you come to church two times three in three months? That is some behavior. And I look at this, I'm like, ah! If I was not a pastor and this person was close, slaps sideways. And they will start to think, well, you have not been coming. We don't see you. Yes, you are complaining of someone that every day you, we, we, we use the person. 
You are not available. You, we will put you on program for closing prayer thinking you will come next week Sunday. You won't come. We do it again. The following, you won't come. The day we don't put you, you will come. So at the end of the day, how will we know whether you will come or not? So the best thing for me to do is I won't put you anymore on programs. And that, they took offense. As if I also care. I also didn't care. I told them straight, when you become available, we will use you. That is God. God will not use someone who is not available. Are, 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 are you here? Am I talking to someone? The next one quickly. Breaking. The process of breaking. God will break you. If you, the moment you ask God to use you, God can't use how you, can't, can't use you the way you are. He has to break you and remold you. The reason someone, some of us are going through some uncomfortable situations in life is because God is preparing to use you. Already you have been designed for good works. You have the spirit of God to manifest good works. Look, every good work of God is already inside your spirit. All God has to do is to break your outer shell, your outer man, so that that life on the inside can come out. So when you tell God, God, use me, God loves it, but he has to break you. You love money too much. You love women too much. Alcohol is your, like your water. God can't use that for now. It must be broken. You like kissing guys too much. God has to cleanse that lips. It is too dirty. Amen. Many things that are not right, God has to break. Now, this is how he has to break. He will break it by the events of your life, the pains you go through the sufferings. He has to discipline you by allowing suffering and pain. Pain, suffering, and means he has to break you. You are so full of yourself. God has to break you to be humble because the little opportunity he gives you on the platform, you will tend to see yourself as God. You have a nice voice to sing. But if God wants to use you, he has to break you. Because if he does not break you, that lovely angelic voice, when you come to say, Oh God! And we are, wow, wow. Every, the little two, three, four praises. You tend to feel, I'm better than everyone in this church. Without me, they can't do nothing. Now God, because of that, he has to break that pride in you. And it's not going to be nice. It will be painful, sorrowful. He will break you to the point that though you have a nice voice, but when we say that, hey, my sister, your voice is nice, you, you don't even know whether to say thank you or not. You will place no value on your nice voice because they have cooked you in fire. It has burnt wrong things out of you. When they say, you have a nice voice. All you can say is, let's give thanks to God. Are you with me? When God breaks you and you come into services to him, when you see money, Mina, your money. Huh. Before I said yes to become a pastor, I already had a call a long time in, in my mother's womb. But me, like Jonah, I wanted money. Sure. I can't go to all these schools, waste these school fees, and come and be a pastor, depending on people's tithes and some offerings, which even that could I have to beg them to give. Hey, no. It was difficult for me to say yes. I remember one time our, our, our previous missions head, Papa Kwashi, when I sent my application, I was serving as a business analyst after school. When I sent my application, he said, Hey, Emmanuel, 
we have been waiting for you to send your application as a pastor and after all this while all we can see on this paper is a lay pastor I was I was not ready at all and not in the mood to be a full time pastor he said why are you come after this long period you know you are called we know come in you won't come I said lay pastor if you don't like it then I won't come to the ministry then they took the lay pastor like that but I realized my conviction God was saying I did not call you to be a lay, lay pastor full time come in put everything away I said Ish. I told my mom and dad everything because I look at the pastor's lives I'm like no this is not for me and I even look at their wives I said Jesus no because the pastor's wives that I saw and I knew around were not my type at all not my taste I said no this must be hard that's when I realized the will of God is hard then I realized I'm not a person who can follow God's will all the while I thought God's will was easy pastor's wives no nothing can move anything in my body by with this woman around me no it was hard so I told God but you can't run away from destiny God had to himself come to me and I told him that before you can use me kill me else I will not save you because I knew if I should skip the process and come in with all these desires in me I wouldn't be effective to him he had to kill the desire for money pleasures in me all manner of things I wanted a caramel skin lady for me that time if you were dark and black as a woman your black must be chocolate or some melanin it has to have some melanin in that other than that I cannot be attracted to that I had that sort of mindset because I, I grew up with this standard I had my own standards I wasn't settling for less I felt highly educated having six qualifications master's degree and several qualifications different varsities I, 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 I felt that come on what more and I'm working I was getting what I was getting was a bit better than to be a pastor people's quest no God had to kill all that after I one time posted on my status it is not every woman you can marry that's when God knew that something is happening to my son amen he realized that the Holy Spirit is working then I realized that I can it's not every woman I can marry for some reason those with Duku were starting to look attractive to me. <laughs> Amen. And today is why I'm here. Ah, so God has to break you. Are you with me now? And remove all things. It wouldn't be easy. It came through a lot of pain. There was people, there were people that I was in love with. I was in love with this lady. But deep down my heart, I knew this, this woman won't help me. But she was hot and nice. Her, my heart had gone for this lady to the point that whatever I knew, even if she was to lead me to hell, I was ready to follow. I was in love. But God said, break your heart. You yourself, break your own heart. Let her go. He said, hey. The pain that this heart has known brokenness I will go to church and I will be quiet Not the people may think I am meditating I am going through broken heart amen pain but that is what today it has made me who I am strong in the Lord powerful I am not moved many things are dead it's why you can't control me because I am no slave to anything I don't need your money I don't need fame followers for what that's why i'm bold to tell you the truth whether you like it or not i don't care you hate me 
you are hating the wind. When God kills you, your emotions are dead to so many things. I'm not moved. You can be offended. Give God praise. Amen. The last one. Cleansing. 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 Tell your neighbor cleansing. For God to use you, you must cleanse yourself. Amen. You must cleanse yourself. Put away wrong things. Decide. Make it a decision that I will no longer go this way. Anything that is filthy, decide to stay away from it. Are you with me now? As a young, my young guests, my young boys are here. I've also been there. I know. Being a young man is not easy. There are many challenges. But decide. I remember there were times I decided that God, no more watching pornography. No more doing this. No more gossiping. No more doing this. No more doing that. No more doing this. No more doing that. Because teenage growing up, these things, we, I grew up with school with people watching and, hey, okay. Ah. We had to stop all this a decision. Stay away. I want to present myself to God. The Bible said in 2 Timothy 2, 20, 21, if someone cleanses himself, God said, God said, I will use you for more honorable things. But if you are not cleansed, I will be using you for ordinary things. That is why in the church, we have people God is using for more honorable things because of their level of consecration. If you won't stop gossiping, God will not grant to you the gift of prophecy. Because with that lip of yours, you will begin to gossip. You will begin to go about and destroy people's lives upon things God shows you. Though you want to be used by God that way, God can grant you that gift because of your lips. You are not ready to stop certain things in your life. Because you like men and women a lot, God will limit his usage with you. He can't use you much. He has to use you for ordinary things. But higher services and ministry, you can't. Because, because of certain things you have not cleansed yourself from. So if you want God to use you for honorable things, you want God to use you to perform miracles, healings, get away from filthy things. And his spirit will fill you. You want your word when you speak, your word does not fall idle. The Bible made us to understand that the words of Moses never fell to the ground. And Samuel, it never fell to the ground. When someone speaks, whatever that it is, God will say, as long as he has opened his mouth, it is that. That is why such people, when you have prayer requests, go to them. You may be talking, God has heard you. But you don't carry certain graces for him to grant certain quick answers. Go to people that have fallen into that grace. Samuel was one of the prophets. The Bible said, not a word from Samuel. God made to fall on the ground. Because of the level of the cleansing. So God uses him for more honorable things. When he speaks, it's like God has spoken. It all depends on your level of cleansing. Else, you will just be used for ordinary things. When you are an usher, you may start by cleaning the church. You may start by sweeping the church. But the more you continue to cleanse yourself, you realize that in your ushering, you have received the gift of visions. You have received a certain gift of performing in miracles. You are no longer now. We don't use the gift of performing in miracles to clean chairs. Now the one who was an usher now will be called from the back to come in front and minister healings and miracles. It becomes more honorable than cleaning the chairs. All upon how you cleanse yourself. Are you with me? Right now, if you want God to use you, Anything that is not right, anything that is filthy, decide that Lord help me to cleanse all these things. Are you with me? Decide. Else, you will be useless to God and your uselessness will cost you. I don't know about you, but sometimes spiritual emptiness 
frustrates me. I don't settle for that. I choose to rise. It can happen to you. When you choose to rise, God will begin to show you realms. I started as a teacher, but I have received the prophetic grace. How is that possible? The more you keep going, the more you keep cleansing yourself, God begins to add more and make you more useful for honorable things. And he has also added the gifts of healing. One time a prophet asked, a pastor asked, why, why have you not started the healing ministry? I said, it will, I will start soon. It has been there. The more you allow, God adds more. Are you with me now? So please, when we are able to apply these principles, it will help us. Desire to be used by God. You will be more happy. The Bible says that the servants of God carry with them peace. The peace of God that I have. Sometimes I feel so sad that I'm the only one. I sense that I'm, this peace is just, to, just me. And many people don't have what I'm enjoying. So I, I feel to share. I feel to share. A lot of problems come on my table. People, and I, I, I tend to feel, feel like, Ish. all because when you have chosen to be used by God, there are privileges. Angels will come to you. Are you with me now? Angels will come to you. We all have angels, but those that are servants are released. Angels are released more. Desire. Let God use you to heal people. Let God use you to help others. Let God use you to be a blessing to many people. When you bring this joy to God, you will find the beauty in serving the Lord. This morning, may the Lord bless you. May he establish you. May he grant you grace to grow from grace to grace. May you arise in power. May you become a useful vessel at your workplace, on the streets, in your family, in your marriage, in the church, anywhere you find yourself. May you be a vessel that God can use to affect life for his glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.